Welcome back to another video. Today, it's five annoying things and five good things about the Range Rover SVR. So, let's start off with the good things, okay? Number one has to be the sound. I've talked about it so many times in previous videos. The sound of this five liter supercharged V8 is insane. It is the best sounding V8, I believe, on the market. Happy to see the comments on that one, but it is unbelievable and it has to be the number one. It has to be. And that's really what the new one's gonna suffer with, being that 4.4 liter turbocharged engine. It's not gonna have that same noise. And I think that is gonna really impact the, um, the, you know, the, the wow factor of this car. That's the first thing you notice is the noise uh, in, in this. Um, so that has to be number one. Number two, not all about sound, it's the performance. The performance on the Range Rover SVR is just incredible. I mean, it is supercar like performance um, and yet it can be just comfortable and just cruise and waft along the road as well so that for me has to be number two coming in at number three just talked about it briefly but it's the daily driving aspect of this car you know it can be the sports car that you want and it can be the comfy you know cruiser that just wafts down the road it can be a daily driver it can also be your winter daily driver because you know it's dependable you know it can do everything you need it to do so really it has to take that number three spot coming in at number four for the good things um has to be the size of it i mean the overall size of the range rover okay yeah on you know parking might be a bit of an issue but overall it's amazing we recently went camping and being able to throw everything in this car knowing that you know if it rains which let's be honest England rains all the time um, you're not going to get stuck it's going to be able to get out of the thing out of the grass or the mud whatever take it off road to be honest it's not really off road but it can do it and that's the main thing is that this car is just so so usable um, and so really has to be number four coming in number five the final last thing there is many more good things about this car but I'm sticking it to the actual things that I love it's the interior the in interior is just it's so good and that really goes to the exterior as well the aesthetics of this car is just amazing and overall the you know the layout and the space you get and the comfy bucket seats oh, just it has to be up there it really does and the quality as well everything is soft touch leather it's just it is really really good so they're my five good things about the car now on to the bad i know what you're gonna think number one has to be the fuel you're wrong my number one is probably something that no one talks about. Literally, no one talks about. I've not seen one review that mentions this, but it's my most annoying gripe with this car, and it's not the fuel. It's the fact that the auto ter terrain selector has to be pressed down to shift from auto terrain to comfort, to eco, to sport. And that drives me onto the main annoying thing with that. Sport mode is two swivels to the left. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're driving along and you want to engage sports mode and you flick it and then you put your foot down and it goes, because mm. you've put it in or, or eco mode. Why is eco the first one to the left of the normal mode? I don't understand what they were thinking. You've got all your off-roading commands to the right. So you, when you swivel the wheel right, you go from you know normal to, to winter mode, to, to gravel, sand, whatever it is, right? And then to the left of the swivel, you've got so anti-clockwise you've got eco mode first then sports mode on a range of rest vr the sports mode should be you know a quick button flick or just one turn to the left that should be the automated standard you want to go sports mode from from normal eco mode on an svr really that has to be the most annoying thing i don't know what they were thinking they could even program it in but the screen although it looks great again you can't click anything if it's in if it's pushed down in auto mode which let's be honest you're gonna leave it in most of the time so that is my number one gripe this screen again whilst good you know the only two buttons that actually matter is this one which is the most important one let's be honest it's the exhaust button on uh, and then this one which is turn stop start off stop start so annoying in a car like this there's something that you're not going to use who cares <laughs> when you click this button and you turn it left oops when you do that it has to go to sports mode why does it go to eco mode first I'll, I'll show you so i've pressed this button we go to comfort mode okay i turn left anti-clockwise goes to eco who wants eco it's an svr give me full sports mode first please give me dynamic okay 
they've done it the wrong way around. It should have been comfort, sports mode, eco. Why do it this way around? It makes no sense at all. Number two, you're right, it is fuel. Fuel is just something that you have to deal with. Obviously, I know being this car the way it is, it's something that I was expecting. What is annoying though is even though it's a 100 litre tank, it can only do 300 miles. My Tesla will do 320 comfortably on a full charge. This is constantly asking for fuel. And it's not the cost, it's just the inconvenience of having to go fill it up. And it's not, you know, a, a one minute job filling up. It does take like five, you know, seven minutes, whatever, to fill up. So that has to be number two. Coming in at number three for the annoying side of this car. Again, something that might just be unique to me, but I find myself doing it all the time. And no one really talks about this as well. The driving position is great. But for some reason, the brake pedal is absolutely huge and the clearance below the brake pedal on the actual um, floor is quite small. And what happens is as you get out of the car, your foot gets stuck and kind of left in the car while the rest of your body tries to get out. And that's kind of, I always find myself just getting stuck on the car. I don't know what it is, but something that's quite annoying. That's my number three. Coming in at number four. This is a unique one to this car, but I have the high gloss black trim. Now, the problem with this is the sun reflects off it, which is quite annoying. Um, when it's not, you know, just reflecting off your eyeballs, what you do see is just constant little scratches. Now, I'm quite blessed that there's not many on this car, but there is there is some there. And it's just that high gloss trim. It really shows any type of slight, you know, imperfection. If you're looking for one of these cars, try get something with a carbon fiber or just a matte finish in general, because, or maybe even more matte PPF, because you will see slight scratches everywhere it's been actually very difficult to narrow down five bad things about this car like i said i can only really point to three but number five for me okay it's probably gonna have to be the delay in gear shifts when you're in comfort again i think it's something that adapts to the driver but when you've been cruising along for a long time it might just be because i'm coming out of the tesla which is like bang instant response no fucking around it's straight away this just feels like it just wants to go, oh, let me see what you want. And because it's so difficult to get to, you know, that SVR mode, which is full sports, give me everything, it just takes a little delay. And what I find myself doing is you just press the flappy paddle and away we go, because that's probably the easiest way you'll do a gear change. Because if you just put your foot down, it goes, you know, from six gear, all right, I'll give, you, I'll give you five, four, three, that's what you want. And it's, it's just that slight delay. I think if I came from another, you know, if I had my, my other car wasn't a Tesla with just instant torque, then maybe I would be like, oh, that's pretty quick shifting. But it's something that I just notice quite a lot in comfort that there's not an instant torque response and it's because it's in the wrong gear or it's just trying to think about what you want it to do. Put it in SVR and sport mode when you can find it. That, that that's all I ironed out. So they're my five good things, five bad things. Like I say, there is so many more good things and it was actually quite hard to find five negative things about this car. This is just, it's just a perfect daily driver in my opinion. Um, more content to come on this car. I am gonna get an exhaust done uh, probably in the next two weeks. So I'll be posting a video of the before and after of the sound, what really that does to transform this car. Um, the sound for me is already number one. So how it can improve it, I have no idea, but apparently it makes a massive difference. So looking forward to do that. I am gonna try to get it around the track as well. Um, there's a track close to me. Um, so I'll try to take it there, see what it can actually do on the track. I am a bit apprehensive, it is a big heavy SUV, but let's see what it's like. Uh, and I'll also do another more spirited drive, um, but obviously um, trying to keep to legal limits with a car like this is quite difficult, especially when you're uploading it to YouTube. So um, stick around, more car content to come. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, stay around for more content, uh, and I'll see you on the next one.